Joshua. Let's put our hands together. For Friends. You. Joshua Knight. So thank you very much for coming out. Thank you to Fearless for doing this amazing thing and allowing me to do the thing that I usually do, which is roll up and do a half hour fresh as a daisy while everyone glares at me because I'm so well rested. <laughs> thank you for not having killed me for doing that yet. Appreciate it. Yet. How's, the, how's the guitar? Check. The guitar can't say check one, two. It just can't. Um, <laughs> Thank you to Becky, thank you to Jason. Both of them are excellent hosts. One of them is clearly superior. <laughs> Jason. All right, look. One of them is clearly superior. Uh, <laughs> thank you to everyone for being here. Thank you to everyone on the live stream. If you are not here and you are not on the live stream, go fuck yourself. <laughs> the, they will never know unless you tell them. Right? I'm getting like a whole lot of light glare on the glasses, so I'm just going to say seeing is for chumps. <laughs> Put them right there. Let's go. It's going to be okay. All right. So I am officially done talking about anybody else but myself because that is what I have set aside this hour. Hour? No, half hour. Ooh. Oh, take that bit out. Take that bit out. Yeah. Okay. Be, be fine. Be fine. So yes, I came to play music, but not just to play music because even with my like overinflated sense of self-importance that comes from being a middle-aged white male, I don't think that that would hold your attention long enough. So... I got some other stuff I'd like to talk about. <clears throat> so my wife and I have been married now for 13 years. You know, you know. Before that, we were dating for four years. And before that, I was a total loser for about three years. So it occurred to me, the upshot of this the other day, that I have not had sex with anyone who is not my wife for 20 years. Two decades. That's like half of my entire life. The last time that I boned down with somebody who is not my wife, the movie 10 Things I Hate About You was in theaters. And we were probably doing it to the soundtrack. I want you to want me. Anybody? I want you to me. It's too old, yeah. But it's the letters to Cleo version, because that's more like Rat Girl. So cool. But, you know, i got to say, after 20 years, the sex does get kind of fucking incredible, actually. Because you have so much practice with each other and it just gets better and better. It just, it, it, we're aging like fine wine. It's perfect. I mean, with each other. Right? Like, I don't imagine that if I had another partner that it would go anywhere near that well. Because I think we're more accustomed to each other at this point. I think it would be kind of like switching from a PC to a Mac, where you'd just be like, what is this extra button for? And <laughs> How to close the it's crashing, it's crashing. No good, no good. But you know, we've changed over the years. We grow up with each other, we grow into each other. But I definitely changed quite a bit when my son came along. Uh, my son is 10 years old now, but uh, for a bit there, there was this weird shift, right? Because you're, you're doing a different kind of love from that romantic love to that familial, all-encompassing, you know, smothering love that you have for a child, you know? And like, I'm going around the house calling her mommy because we don't want to confuse the kid. She's calling me daddy, which is the same thing she calls me in bed, so that's confusing. <laughs> I feel like that's way too far away, hold on. All right, we'll make it <clears throat> And the weirdest thing to me was just that switch between the oh love and to the uh -huh, love, you know? It's, it's weird. So, as I often do when things are strange and I can't make sense of it, I wrote a song about it. Uh, and this song is called Good Night, My Angel. <clears throat> Precious child, close your eyes. Time for singing. Lullabies You've been playing Hard today So Time to put your Toys away and go to bed Turn out that light Cause your mom and dad We're doing it 
it tonight. <laughs> We're doing it tonight. You're snoring gonna go buck wild, son. You better hope you stay asleep. You'll be a grown man soon, and therapy ain't cheap. So, precious child, don't you know your mama and your daddy they love you so, but we love each other too, and all the things that lovers do are better kept. Far from sight, but you can bet that your mama and your daddy will be going buck wild tonight. <laughs> Tell her do what they were doing it tonight. First, I'm gonna strip off your mama's sweet little Saturday night gown. And it ain't even my birthday, but she promised me tonight she's going downtown. Yeah, then we're gonna make her make some noise. Then we open up the drawer where we keep the toys. Whatever you hear, son, stay away. Papa's not hurting mama, everything's okay. So, precious child, count some sheep. Pull up the covers and go to sleep. Seriously, go to sleep. Daddy's getting antsy, son. Go to sleep, every little thing. Gonna be all right. Do you know why? Cause your mama and your daddy get freak nasty tonight. Yeah, what you gonna do? What you gonna do with it tonight? Well, yeah. Oh, baby, I'm gonna do it. You better, you better do it, never cheat it, never but, but, what, 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 baby? But I sent you the invite on my Google Calendar, honey, and you accepted it, so I figured that, oh, Game of Thrones is dropping tonight? Fuck it, we're doing that instead. <laughs> oh, no, don't encourage me, it's no good. Um, like I said, already overinflated sense of self-worth. <laughs> so, it is true though that after that much time, there has to be new ways to communicate with each other, I've found. Especially, I used to be a stay-at-home dad, and now I work full-time, she works full-time. So we have to have to, have to find different ways to connect with each other. And it can be kind of unexpected, like, one of the ways that we found we can communicate is through the Amazon.com shopping cart. <laughs> Let me explain to you how this works. So. <clears throat> First, to back up, my son, uh, he's 10 years old now, and he's a genius. And it sounds so shitty to say that, like, my kid's a fucking genius. But he <laughs> is, he took the test. He is smarter than any of us, and the problem is, he is aware that he is smarter than any of us. Oh. But he is not aware that he lacks the context and knowledge to bring that, ba that base intellect to light, right? So he, for example, believes that he is better at being a parent than his parents. <laughs> Better being a teacher than his teachers, and he is quick to spot injustices, and when he feels like you're not doing it right, he will not cease to argue with you until the heat death of the known universe. <laughs> so, and, and because of that though, he has the whole world on his shoulders. You know, it's, he's like a 40 year old man, he's like, ah, oh, I gotta make sure that my teachers are teaching right. I gotta make sure that my parents aren't screwing up my little sister. And you know, when he learned about global warming at school, like, oh great, now I gotta fix that. <laughs> I, I was using a straw the other day. He's like, do you know how much plastic there is in the oceans and nobody else is gonna do anything about it? So it's hard. You know, he gets, he gets a little weird, so he gets in trouble at school. So, for instance, uh, he got in trouble at school. Uh, the teacher, who is a pretentious little prick, who I, <laughs> I hope isn't watching, said, your son got into a little bit of trouble at school today. That's how his emails go. Uh, he said, uh, some inappropriate language. He said, what the frick? <laughs> and by the grace of God, I did not email him back and say, what the fuck are you trifling? <laughs> but 
but I didn't because my son already has trouble with authority. So, you know, we have to reinforce that teacher authority. So I, I went to him and said, son, you can't say frick in class. You know, that's his rule. You got to go by his rules. And he said, do you think it's a bad word? Oh. <laughs> and I said, well, I don't. But it is his class and you have to abide by his rules. And if I were in his class, I would say, what do you want me to say? Okay, okay. So the next day I got an email that said, so uh, your son said frack in the school today. And when I told him that that was inappropriate language, he said, well, I didn't say frick. And besides, my dad thinks it's stupid that you have these rules. <laughs> Please have a word with your son. So after I get that email, I can go and check my Amazon cart. Remember the Amazon cart? Yeah. That's how I speak to my wife now. And I can, I can see that it's full of books, uh, like Parenting Your Difficult Child, Parenting Without Power Struggle, uh, What to Do When You Want to Strangle Your Kid and You Don't Think You Can Hide the Body. You know, like, Is that real? Oh, two out of three of those were real. <laughs> but there are books for the kid to read, too. So, and honest to God, the title of this book was My Mouth is a Volcano. And there's a drawing of this kid with his mouth like wide open and lava coming out of his face because... I think this was a parent who wanted to write a book called Why Harold Can't Shut the Fuck Up, but they <laughs> didn't think that they could get away with it, so my mouth is a volcano. So I understand when I see that in the cart without even speaking to her that she's concerned about our son and she's concerned about the way we're parenting him. And so I, I tell her that I agree by buying the books. And they come to the house and we put them in a big pile. And we don't read them, because who has the time? But <laughs> nobody ever reads them, but I feel like just having them there eventually the psychic weight of all of those books are going to somehow sink into our household and make it run better? Maybe. <laughs> but, you know, I communicate with the cart, too. Uh, for instance, I will add some Funko Pops from Doctor Who. You know, the, the little, like, button-eyed things that Woo! stare in your soul and look like everything you ever loved as a child? <laughs> <laughs> and my wife understands, without me even saying it, that I am, well... I'm 41 years old and I can't afford a sports car and I don't want to have an affair, but I am having a midlife crisis because I feel that I never actually got good at anything in my life or cultivated any interests that make me interesting to other people. And because of that, and also because of a culture of toxic masculinity, I never really made a connection with any of the men in my life, including my father, but definitely including my male friends. And now it's a little bit too late, I feel, to be good at anything, to master anything, and to get a deep relationship. And so the one thing that I can do is to go onto a fandom that I had no hand in creating, of course, but that resonates with me on a certain level, and I can use that to fill the empty hole in my soul, $9.99 a pop. <laughs> and she gets it. And she buys them. And then we put them on a shelf, and then the next time I look at the cart, it's helping your explosive husband. <laughs> Why can't Harold grow the fuck up? <laughs> So it's good, we're communicating. <laughs> so I have a daughter. Uh, she's three years old, going on four. She uh, currently is moving too fast through life to appear on film, so she hasn't been photographed in a while. It's just like a, a bouncy blur going along. And it's a little different having a daughter. You know, um, before my son was born, we didn't find out the gender and or the, the genital configuration, because fuck gender, whatever. He, uh, and I was concerned, like, if I have a son, because I'm not like a man's man. You know, it's like, what if he's into sports, or cars, or sports cars, or <laughs> cars that involve sports, like balls, like, I'm not equipped for that. You know, what if he is not a giant nerd? Little did I know that genetics would come to play in that, and he would be a giant nerd. But I was worried, right? But as soon as I saw his tiny little penis, I felt better because I know how a penis works. I've had one for quite some time. Most of my life, I would say. And, <laughs> like, I knew how to clean up after it. I knew that what age that the pee would start appearing on the walls and have to clean it up. I know when we're going to need to supply him with an endless stream of clean linens and not ask any questions. I know, you know, all that's a masturbation. I know all that is coming up, you know. But when my daughter was born, I did you know, I looked at her vagina and I was like, I, I have some experience. Like, obviously, I try not to be the just caveman who's like, oh, it's a mystic region. I have no idea. <laughs> but, 
But I was a little frightened, you know, like this is a new relationship for me to have with one of these things. And at the same time, so this was 2015, when we as a society finally decided we were going to listen to women going, hey, it sucks for us in many ways. And like we actually started tuning into these things. And I was like, well, here is my daughter coming into this world and she has a body that people are going to denigrate and want to possess in ways that they really shouldn't. And so I talked to my son about it to see if he could fix it. And he's like, now great, now I have to fix feminism, thanks. <laughs> I saw them on his, uh, his little uh, profile for his school. He identifies as a feminist, so parenting win. You know, uh, <laughs> but it was just a kind of a weird sensation. So what I did, uh, as I often do with things that I find weird and upsetting, I wrote a song about it. And this song is called uh, Feminist Dads. And it is an acoustic punk song, because I guess that's how I roll. <laughs> I'm a feminist husband and a feminist dad. The way this culture treats women, y'all, gets me a fighting man. Women gotta be respected, not as daughters or wives. Cause that they're actually people, y'all, gotta run their own lives. So pretty baby, when you grow up, I will tell you what to do or what to nine. Get your hands off of your twat. Get your hands off of your twat, baby. Get your hands off of your twat. I respect your body, you turn on me, but get your hands off of your twat. I know. I'm a sex positive person. In fact, a bit of a perv. And the people slut shaming. Get on my last nerve. And when you say you're gonna shoot, shoot, shoot your daughter's first boyfriend, you're just saying she's an object. Worth you got a damn fan. In other words, before she can make a boner drip, you have to transfer ownership. And that is deeply fucked up. Right? Yes. So pretty they know when you're going, I won't tell you who to do with the what you got. But for now, you gotta clean your butthole. So get your hands off me to what? Hands off me to what? Baby, get your hands off me to what? Baby, your hands off me to what? Someday you'll smash the Get your hands off me, it's what? <laughs> this song is ridiculous. <laughs> <clears throat> There's nothing bad about vaginas, nothing sacred or weird. They ain't a thing to be worshipped or a thing to be feared. And anybody says otherwise, baby, you know they're just a twist. All the thing wrong with your badge right now, honey, is that it's covered in <laughs> I can't wait until you grow up and you can put it all out of your poopy in the pots. But now I gotta swab your lady and skin over this skin, it's fucking everywhere. And get your hands off me, it's wide, baby, get your hands off me, it's wide. It's as awkward for you as it is for me, so put your hands off me, it's wide. Feminist dads wash dishes and change diapers, and feminist dads work is never done. And feminist dads don't call their fucking babysitting, and feminist dads raise feminist daughters and sons. And feminist dads raise feminist daughters and sons. We're getting close. We have seven minutes left. I have five minutes of thing to do. I have two more minutes to talk to you. We should probably just go ahead and do the big uh, sing-along finale, because if we get close to time and we miss that, I'm going to be pissed. And if we need to add something in afterwards, we can do that. So uh, to, to get into this, um, the one thing that I think the kids these days are smarter than us is uh, they are leaving Facebook in droves. <laughs> They have figured out, in a way that we haven't, that this is the most toxic environment, that maybe it's not a good idea to put all of ourselves online all of the time in public. So they're, they're going away to private chat rooms while the rest of us just piss ourselves off every day with the stuff that we're reading online, you know? Uh, I mean, online is great in that it gives people who haven't had voices before a chance to have a voice, but it's also horrible because it gives people who haven't had voices before a voice. I mean, it's great when it's, you know, trans people and minority people. And it's, it's terrible when it's MRA douchebags and white supremacists. And the problem is we're all rubbing elbows 
and we're all given the same megaphone regardless of how horrible we are. So I thought about this a whole lot and it, it's taken a while, but I've, I think I've figured out a way that I can kind of step back from the edge and maybe prolong my lifespan a little bit by lowering my blood pressure every day. So <clears throat> because I am a genius, I wrote this song with four parts and then realized that I'm exactly one person. <laughs> Give or take. Maybe like one and a half. So I'm gonna have some friends come up and help me, some people you probably know very well. I've got Eric Knight and Tom T and Kayla Sotabeer coming to the stage. Please welcome them for me. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna step back to the the ambiance mic. So can you hear us okay? Okay. And they can't hear us at all. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a song in four, it's got a breakdown in four parts, and uh, I can't see how people are situated out there. Can we get a little house light, do you think? Is it possible? Yes! Hey. Hey. I kind of see people now. Okay, so <laughs> roughly the people like, huh? I would like you to join me uh, in our breakdown. It's going to go like this. Oh, whoa, it's not going to go like that. Jesus. Who knew that punk rock would throw my guitar somewhere out of tune? Oh, it's bad. So bad. This is so bad. That's bad. It's my nightmare on stage. Am I still wearing pants? I'm still wearing pants. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not the whole that. nightmare. <laughs> Later. All right. So uh, your part over here. You're gonna follow me in the breakdown. It's gonna go like this. I don't always have to have an opinion. 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 Try with me. I don't always have to have an opinion. 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 Perfect. So, uh, people who are on the right hand side of things, <clears throat> you're going to follow Tom. You have the easiest part, so don't fuck it up. It goes like this. <laughs> you have four entire notes. It goes like this. Go for it. So those on like the left side of the middle, you're going to be with Eric. You have the hardest part, but you're also the smartest, so I trust you. Yeah. Uh, your bit goes like this. Let him be wrong, 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 let him be wrong. Let him be wrong, let him be wrong, let him be wrong, let him be wrong, let him be wrong. That's it. Perfect. And uh, those of you who are with Kayla, everybody left. <laughs> you have the most. Yes. Everybody at the left or the right, the right of the, the square yeah. of the hypotenuse yeah. of the... <laughs> <laughs> you guys have the most fun part? Yes. Your part goes like this. Move on, move on, move on, move the fuck on, move on. So keep all of those in your back pocket, <laughs> and remember them while I do this little bit. I could spend most of my days in a red rage, arguing on Facebook, ignoring my kids at play, feeling that vein start to pound in the back of my face, typing myself into an early grave, only wanted to look at babies and cats, and See which of my friends from high school got fat and how do we end up this way? It's time for a change. This is my middle age social media mantra. Gotta watch my blood pressure. Don't wanna waste my time, time, time. This is my middle age social media mantra. 
Gotta watch my blood pressure Don't wanna waste my time, time, time So I'll say I don't always have to have an opinion 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 Social media mantra Gotta watch my blood pressure Don't wanna waste my time Sing with me This is my middle age Social media mantra Gotta watch my blood pressure Don't wanna waste my time, time, time This is my middle age Social media mantra Gotta watch my blood pressure don't want to waste my time, 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 time. Holy shit, that was beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. Thank you for being with me. Have a great day. Please have all of your ready to be here with me. These guys are amazing. Thanks for being here for me, and thanks for being so awesome to me. And uh, we'll see you what's next. Thank you. 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 Thank you.